When the Apollo astronauts returned from the moon, the dust that stuck to their spacesuits made their throats ache and their eyes wet. The particles in lunar dust are sharp, abrasive, and unpleasant. But how hazardous is it to humans? The lunar hay fever, as NASA astronaut Harrison Schmidt characterized it during the Apollo 17 mission, caused symptoms in all 12 astronauts from sneezing to nasal congestion. In some cases, it took days for the reactions to fade. The dust inside the spacecraft smelled like burning gunpowder. The moon missions left an unsolved question about lunar exploration, one that might influence humanity's next moves in the solar system. Can lunar dust endanger human health? But there is another effect of the moon on Earth that is significantly more dangerous to all people on the planet than just a few astronauts, which is enormous floods. What is happening on the moon? How will this result in unprecedented floods on Earth? And how will this affect us? In this video, we look at NASA experts' warnings about the devastating floods that the moon would unleash on Earth. Flooding along the Louisiana coast is bad now. Just wait a few years. Yeah, a new study from NASA warns there could be record flooding possibly every day or two in some cities in the next decade, and you can blame it all on the moon. The moon is less than a third the width of the Earth, having a radius of around 1,018 miles, or 1,740 kilometers. The moon is an average 238,855 miles, 384,400 kilometers distant, with enough space to accommodate 30 Earth-sized planets. While the Earth takes around 365 days to orbit the Sun, the Moon completes an orbit around Earth in 27 Earth days and rotates or spins in the same amount of time. However, because Earth moves and rotates, it seems to us that the Moon circles the Earth every 29 days. The Moon may look peaceful, yet it formerly contained active volcanoes that are now dormant and have not erupted in millions of years. What does the Moon's surface look like? We know what the Moon's terrain looks like and why it is that way owing to probes and landings. However, unlike Earth, the Moon's atmosphere is too thin to prevent objects from colliding with it. As a result, the Moon is constantly bombarded by asteroids, meteorites and comets. The crashes produce multiple craters, such as the Tycho Crater, which is more than 52 miles, 85 kilometers wide. Over billions of years, these hits have shattered the Moon's surface into fragments ranging from massive boulders to powder. The lunar regolith is a rubble pile of charcoal grey powdered dust and rocky debris that covers practically the whole moon. Regolith is a lunar astronaut's worst nightmare since it is charged and goes into everything messing things up. The mega regolith is an area of fragmented bedrock under the surface. The bright portions of the moon are known as the highlands, whereas the dark structures known as Maria are basins produced by multiple impacts and filled with lava between 4.2 and 1.2 billion years ago. Researchers use these bright and dark spots to understand how the early crust may have formed from a lunar magma ocean. What about surviving on the Moon? Even with the most modern equipment, staying on the satellite for an extended period of time will need extreme endurance. In bright sunlight, the temperature of the Moon reaches roughly 260 degrees Fahrenheit, or 127 degrees Celsius. Remember that the atmosphere cannot shield you from the Sun's rays. When it turns dark, temperatures can plunge below minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 173 degrees Celsius. While the Moon is small in comparison to the Earth and is bound by Earth's gravity, it has significant influence on the planet. One of these effects, according to NASA, will be widespread floods. Many things that happen around you are caused by the Moon, even if you are unaware of it. In fact, if the Moon disappeared from its location, the Earth would alter so drastically that we may not recognize it as our home. The tides are the most prevalent and visible influence of the Moon on the Earth. 
both the moon and the sun exert a gravitational pull on Earth, which results in tides. Actually, the Earth's oceans facing the moon swell up in reaction to the lunar gravitational push, creating a high tide. However, because of the difference in gravitational attraction between the near and far sides of the Earth, there is also a high tide on the side farthest from the moon. Because the ocean is liquid between such two high tides, there are two low tides. Also, because Earth rotates, these high and low tides move around the world every 24 hours. Therefore, each coastal site has two high tides and two low tides every day. Tides are also crucial to marine life. Many species flourish in a region known as the intertidal zone. And if this area shrinks or narrows owing to lower tides, the species there will simply die out. And for humans, that implies longer and more difficult fishing seasons. A popular water activity would suffer, and you guessed it, surfing will suffer if the moon is removed. All of this may seem far-fetched, but as NASA scientists and a team from the University of Hawaii have discovered, we are going to observe the moon's unsettling consequences in real time, owing to the moon shifting its position, which they term the moon wobble. What precisely is going on with the moon? The moon is more mysterious than we believe, and the sneaky satellite continues to surprise us. While the moon seems to move in circles and ovals, there is another component in its rotation and revolutions that will cause us major problems. As the seas and sea levels rise, we can already witness the consequences of climate change. However, things are likely to grow worse for coastal towns. Of course, scientists have known about the moon's wobble for ages, but the potential consequences are there in front of us. NASA is particularly concerned about how the moon wobble would worsen the Earth's already existing climate concerns. As previously stated, high tides are created by the pull of the moon's gravity on the Earth as the planet spins, resulting in two tides per day. In addition, the moon orbits the Earth once per month in a slightly tilted orbit. To be more precise, the moon's orbital plane around the Earth is at a five-degree angle to the Earth's orbital plane around the Sun. As a result, the moon's orbit seems to change with time. It completes a full cycle on the nodal cycle every 18.6 years. This occurs on a slow time scale, however, at some time during this cycle, the moon's gravitational attraction is at such an angle that it drags one of the day's two high tides a little higher, or the second one a little lower. You should have noticed by now that the moon is not necessarily wobbling and that it is still tugging on the Earth with the normal force. Of course, scientists are expecting much greater high tide flooding even before the influence of the moon's wobble was discovered. However, in order to make forecasts of these tides, researchers must go through a large amount of noisy data since they must cope with complicated weather patterns, astronomical occurrences, and regional tide variants. The moon wobble is now part of the data that they must include into their models. According to NASA experts, moon wobble will increase the effective sea level. They claim that as the decade progresses, every coast in the United States will see significantly higher flooding. However, we may have a little reprieve while the moon is still in its tide-amplifying cycle. The highest seas amplified by the moon cycle will trigger a surge in flood numbers throughout nearly all U.S. mainland beaches, including Hawaii and Guam. Only the extreme northern shores, including Alaska's, will be spared for a while since land areas are rising owing to long-term geological processes. So how bad will the floods be? You may recall some recent severe floods, but NASA predicts that the moon's wobble will cause the amount of flooding disasters to triple or quadruple, which is a frightening prospect. Using 2019 as a benchmark where scientists predicted 600 floods, it is difficult to assess the consequences of greater flooding anticipated by NASA. 
Low-lying regions are the most vulnerable to floods and the situation will only worsen with time. Researchers have used models to predict how these floods would appear and some of these floods may occur in clusters lasting more than a month. Cities may suffer flooding on consecutive days or every other day, depending on the alignment of the moon, sun and earth. These tipping spots were determined by watching 89 tide gauge stations in every coastal U.S. state and territory except Alaska. They developed a novel statistical methodology for mapping common sea level scenarios and flooding thresholds. Phil Thompson, an assistant professor at the University of Hawaii and the lead author of the study, pointed out in a release that because high tide floods involve a small amount of water compared to hurricane storm surges, there's a tendency to view them as a less significant problem overall. But if it floods 10 or 15 times a month, a business can't keep operating with its parking lot underwater. People lose their jobs because they can't get to work. Seeping cesspools become a public health issue. They are continuing their research and want to upgrade the flood tool in the future. Flooding on such a regular basis might cause significant economic harm. This is before taking into account damage to key infrastructure, such as water supplies, electricity production, communication equipment and so on. Farmers may also lose all of their crops and livestock if they are submerged underwater, resulting in food instability. All told, the United States might face trillions of dollars in damages. These floods differ from conventional high tide floods, which can exceed two feet in depth and are referred to as mutant floods since they are more of a nuisance than a calamity. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson explained in a release, the combination of the moon's gravitational pull, rising sea levels and climate change will continue to exacerbate coastal flooding on our coastlines and across the world. NASA's Sea Level Change Team is providing crucial information so that we can plan, protect and prevent damage to the environment and people's livelihoods affected by flooding. NASA believes that disclosing their findings may assist at risk cities in taking preventative steps. It is critical that people begin planning now as flooding can continue for a decade once it begins. Let us know what you think of NASA's flood warnings in the comments below.